my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to a session of Not Perfect Zen. We have just finished the Inktober Tangles for 2023, and that was actually a very good experience. Uh, there was uh, some challenging stuff, but I learned from it, and I'm very grateful that I did, and I hope that you enjoyed it, too. If um, you put your tiles on social media, I would ask you to use at BBL underscore Tangle so I can be notified and I can look at your tiles. Um, today, I want to start by talking about something that I mentioned in the... Inktober Tangles, and that was Gratid Tangles. And that starts November 1st, and this is for 2023. And um, the way to find the patterns is in the files. This is Facebook, okay? So in the Facebook group called Gratid Tangles, you'll find all of the pages and the calendars and things like that under the files, and then in Tangle All Around, also a Facebook page, you'll find it under the albums. And this one is really nice because she has a photo of each of the step outs in that album. Okay, um, today I'm going to show you one of the patterns that is in that, and it's called Tule. T-U-L-Y, let me write this on the back, it is T-U-L-Y, and it is by Carmen Muniz Riel, and she is a CZT, okay? And this is the basic pattern. And of course, I'm going to show you how to do it. And what I did in this one, zoom in a little bit, was I did the pattern and then I put fragments, different fragments in there. And a fragment is just a tiny pattern, okay? So you could put any pattern, like this is henna drum. Uh, this is flux. Some of these are just um, the fragments that I found from the primer from Zentangle. But you can also find these fragments on the Mustercal site. And I will have a link in the description so that you can go look at the fragments if you're interested in what I used was the triangle fragments, okay? So um, this is a fun little pattern. And I'm also going to put uh, a picture of the Gratitangles calendar that shows you the name of the pattern for each of the days, okay? So, I will have that, and then um, we're going to do a tile with this. I'm really grateful to have the time and the knowledge and the way to share Zentangle because I really love it. Uh, you probably understood that already. Okay, so I'm going to put my four corner dots. Okay, and I'm going to put a border. So just connect these dots. And I'm doing mine kind of straight because this is kind of a grid that we're working with. All right. And for this pattern, it's very much like Huggins. Okay, just the lines are a little different. And 
let me show you this. This is where I was just kind of practicing. Okay, so this is the basic grid. So we are going to put four orbs across and then four orbs down. Okay. So one doesn't have to be perfect. Mine won't be. Okay, so there's four. I'm going to go ahead and turn my tile and do the other four going in this direction. So there's one, two, three, four, and then I just kind of line those up. So um, the next thing we're going to do, is, and by the way, I am using a Zentangle 3.5 inch tile. I'm using a Micron PN. I will use a graphite pencil and a blending stump and possibly an eraser because I'm okay with that. All right, so the next step is we're going to put let me show you again here on a curvy line that goes down and we're going to do that all the way down in one column so we just come off of this come down a little bit and up we're going to skip this one and then we're going to do the same thing over here just a little bit of a curve so we're going to go down this row do it all the same or actually this is a column <laughs> If you're talking about a grid, this is a column, this is a row. So, all right, so we're just, just on the top of these orbs. Okay, now we're going to go on the bottom here, okay? We're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be this column. It's a pretty easy setup. All right, that's all we have to do to get it started. So now we're going to go to the center between these two and we're going to do a slightly curved line that comes around to each side, to these orbs. Okay, so start, find your center point and then just a simple, slightly curve as it comes around to here. Same thing on this side. And again, we're going to repeat this down this column. Okay. Do the same thing in this column. Start in the center, slight curve and around. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing in this one, but let's go ahead and rotate it so that we're thinking the same way. Again, we're going to start in that center, make a curve. Around. And you'll see now that this is already that line.
If you look at the step outs in tanglepatterns.com, they show a photo of the architecture that she saw, um, that Carmen saw, and what inspired her. Okay, on these sides, these would be coming out this way. I'm just going to stop at our little border. Same thing here. Okay, so now we're going to start to put some patterns in here. Um, the ones that I liked the most were uh, this one, this one, and this one, because I love henna drums, so I'm going to do those three right here. And we're going to do them in the same column, kind of like we did. Um, drawing this out. So this is going to be in a drum. So we're just gonna put a slight C curve and then fill that in. Okay. And then an aura across there. And then I'm gonna put the petals that go up, but I'm not going to touch all the way at the top. It's going to go up. And then stop when you get to that edge. This is how I do mine. I like to start in the middle and then go across. Okay? And then I'm going to put some little Flicks of my pen there at the bottom in each of these little petals. Okay, let's do the same thing down here. So, we are in November now. <sighs> the year is going fast, but I think we always say that, don't we? I hope it has been good for you. Okay, so we're just doing our petals. Do these little lines. Okay, one more. You know, I like these challenges because I get to learn new patterns that I didn't even know were out there. And this one, Thule, is on Tangle Patterns, I believe. But there's so many patterns there, it's easy to miss them. And when we do these challenges, then I get to see a lot of awesome ideas that people have. Okay, so next I'm going to do this one. And we're going to put that one in this column. And basically all I did was put a center dot and then drew some petals to each corner.
All right. And then put an orb in each of these open areas. And fill in the area that's left behind. Also known as interstices. Let's just say fill in the spaces. I had fun just trying different ways to fill this in. Okay. This one was a little bit <laughs> wonky. It'll be okay. Okay, those little petals, then put our orbs in. Fill it in. On her step out, she had a couple of variations for you to try. All right, one more. So I start, start in the center petal another petal and our third petal <coughs> and add your orbs and fill in around it if you're new to my channel um, oh, I'm sorry <laughs> just like that. I don't do perfect videos. Uh, I call it not perfect zen. Um, I don't speed up my videos. I do this real time so that you can follow along. But if I'm going too slow, YouTube has controls so that you can speed it up. You can go up to double the speed or you can slow it down. And that's also a trick if you happen to watch someone who speeds up their videos, you can slow it down a little bit to follow it. Okay, there's those. And then the next one we're gonna do is this one. I liked this one too. It's do die in it. Okay, so on this one, we're just going to start down at the bottom and put some petals in there. One, two, Kind of like doing flex, just a simple petal to fill that up. Okay, and then we are going to fill in this space so that we're giving a little bit of drama to each of these columns.
Okay, and then in the center, you can put our line, and if you want to, put another dot, a little orb. Okay. So here we go again, a big petal in the middle. Another petal in each side. Making them kind of big to touch both sides. And then fill that in. Don't be afraid to play with things like this and just say, well, what if I did this? Or what if I did that? This is your art. Just enjoy it. I am very critical of my art. Um, maybe we all are. I'm surprised sometimes with <laughs> how it turns out. Okay, filling in that outside area. And then our Line and an orb. Okay, one more. Okay, I'm touching the tip and the sides. Fill them in. A line up the center and an orb. Okay. And I'll go back and do a few touch-ups here and there. Okay, so... You'll see here, one of the things that I've seen was um, one person filled these in with orbs like Perk, um, done like this with Duda, or you can just put a little bit of uh, Aura along these. So let's just do that. So we're just going to come along here. Follow that curve. And if you'll point your pen toward what you're trying to aura, it makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, I'll do that over here. Okay, let's do it on this one now. Okay, now coming down this one, start up here. And now I'm going to turn it so that my pen is facing the side that I want to aura. Okay. 
there, and then along this one. And this side. All right, I think that's so pretty. <laughs> I think this looks kind of like angel wings. So let's do some shading. Okay, let's start with henna drum. And for henna drum, I like to just put some graphite at the bottom of the petals. And since it looks like this is going under, let's put just a little bit of graphite along these lines. Similar to what we do with um, Huggins. Okay, with our blending stuff, we're just gonna soften that so that we don't have a harsh edge from our pencil. And then pull it up towards the middle. Okay, same thing here. Push that up a little bit more if you want. Okay. For this one, hmm, let's just put a little bit of graphite on each side of these look like little rice shapes or petals. And then we'll soften that and pull it toward the center, but we don't want to cover the center. Okay, keep that little white space there. Okay, and then, whoops, almost missed one. And then we're just going to use, I don't think we're not seeing it, just put a little bit of a very small C curve down there and then soften it. Sometimes you have enough left on your tortillon, but I didn't. Okay, so same thing here little bit of graphite on the tips of each of these petals and a little curve on each of these orbs and the graphite across here that I forgot to do Soften that with your blending stump. On those little orbs, just soften that part and then don't push it anywhere else. And it makes it, gives it kind of a, more of a rounded look. And 
go ahead and put this here. Soften it and push it toward the center. All right, now this one. Soften it. Pull it down toward the center. Okay, get this one. These up here at the top. And again, when we do this, it makes it look like those petals are kind of bending a little bit. Same thing here. It gives it just a, a nice shadow. Right. Shading just adds so much. <laughs> I was afraid to add shading in the beginning, but not now because I understand what it can do for your art, especially if you're using black and white, which I prefer to just use black and white. Okay, so I added the shading down here at the bottom of that ribbon. I'm just going to put a little bit at the bottom of each of these. And then soften those, push them up, but not all the way. And if it looks like you got too much, one of the things that you can do is use a kneaded eraser. Like, I think I put a little bit too much in that one. So I can just lift it up and then go back and soften that again. Okay. So look at it and see what you think. As I was doing that shading, I thought maybe it would look better to fill these in since we have these everywhere. So let's just do it. What if, what if we fill those in? This is how we learn what we like, just by trying. If I didn't like it, I'd come back and put jelly roll on top of it, right? All right, here we go. That was fun. I think I'm going to come back off camera before I take pictures, and then I'll fill in these little tiny spots that I missed. Okay, well, I always like to find the top of my tile. <laughs> oh, that's silly, but I look for what's 
on the back, but actually I like it the best this way. So I'm going to put my chop over here. Let's put it coming off of this. So I encourage you to put the pattern names on the back of your tile. I don't know how many patterns I have found recently that don't have names, and I wish that I had that on there. And the date, and uh, you can use that for future reference. All right, awesome. Okay. Okay, there we go. So there's our tile. There is some ideas from a triangle type fragments or just things that I've seen. And if you're interested in finding uh, how to do this and to get the list, there's a list at Gratitude Tangles and Tangle All Around. I am not doing all of these. I have some medical procedures coming up that are going to slow me down. And so um, I won't be doing all of these, but I will do my best to at least do uh, a tile each week. So thank you again for joining me. If you put your tiles on social media, please use at BBL underscore tangles. And please like and subscribe. I will always answer your comments. So if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. And uh, thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.